Good morning, folks. I've linked the latest blog entry from the CIOC. It details what you've seen many times on this channel and others, but if you haven't seen the viewing schedule for Comet Ison, just Google Stereo Ison. The first link that pops up is going to be the Stereo page detailing when this comet passes through all NASA satellite images. The only things not on there are the rover and Phobos location viewing schedules, which were both linked on the CIOC page along with many other sources. Bruce Gary has added the latest Whitmer image and data to his model. The comet appears a little bit brighter. FYI, the spaceweather.com gallery of amateur submissions stays in the link list. These aren't their images, folks. They're ours. It's a little comet, nothing else, but it's on a phenomenal trajectory with two celestial encounters and a path that will probably set debris in the path of Earth, as I've said. Three hours of ice on discussion on the website, guys, and much more in the private forum. Got three worthwhile articles to check out. First, hypersaline basins within water bodies have virtually no oxygen and a ton of salt, and yet they're able to detect life there. Speaking of life, this article might require a bit of a biofocus for comprehension, but the conclusions are interesting nonetheless. For those on the solar panel slash free energy train, how about a near 50% efficient solar cell? Very cool. This is one week of storms and rainfall across planet Earth. This is the rain accumulation via TRMM, just giving some perspective on what happens on the other side of our world. Top weather stories begin in New Zealand, where severe weather warnings were issued a few hours ago for the cell that is heading south from Vanuatu. Meanwhile, due north of that we see Paduk on a beeline for Japan. All models suggest it is about to jerk the wheel to the right. Total lack of solar flaring is belied by a disc chock full of spots. The big guy down south needs to learn he can't do it alone. The leading northern group is divided magnetically with no umbral mixing, but the trailing northern group is building a bipolar complexion at the leading north edge of that active region. Even though we've seen no flaring, it's tough to ever ignore a development like that and we'll keep watch. The solar wind is just now beginning to show interplanetary shock. As it's beginning now, we'll diagnose Genesis tonight. But for now, just know the electrons are sensing the space weather. The next coronal hole is on the Earth-facing disk, and it is powerful. Last night, I showed that it's the most powerful magnetic point on our star. It has faded slightly this morning, but still the strongest on the sun, facing Earth today and tomorrow. And even with it well north of the equator, Earth hasn't taken a large quake in a few days and have been well below average for longer. I expect a change within 48 hours and a sharp but brief uptick, likely starting in the far west Pacific. Shots of our star to close, eyes open. No fear, it's 6.40 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.